All right, what's up, everybody? Uh, we are back. I'm Glitch Cat, and uh, joining me is Pooh. Hey, hey, yeah, I'm gonna be, <laughs> I'm gonna be running this game, but Glitch Cat is the man who made this game, so he's the important one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is Return to Subcon. Uh, this is a brand new, possibly first of its kind, Super Mario Brothers 2 for the NES, uh, a ROM hack that was made pretty recently. We put this out about a week and a half ago, and it was made with a new SMB2 editor uh, created by my friend D to the 4th. And uh, yeah, Pooh's going to show us how it's done here. Hopefully, that is, hopefully. I'm also going to be going for a lot of low low three frame three frame tricks here in this run so there's there's a, a few uh very difficult vine jumps that we're going to be going for and if we miss them like we miss them it gives us more time to talk about how cool this game is but uh we're gonna we're gonna try and go for it all the, all the really cool strats here the best we can and uh there's also from what i know there's a donation incentive to see the tasks of this as well so please get your donations in uh as many as you can right here so we can watch this beautiful hot task because the task is really a sight to behold. And we, and we have stole a lot of strats from it already, which is kind of cool. So, Yeah, Pooh's actually going to be trying a strat that was actually just found out yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, assuming I get, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully I'll try it. Hopefully. Well, we, if I don't get hit, we'll try it. Um, try. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll count it down. You guys ready for a countdown then? All right, we will we will count it down in three, two, one, go. All right, the first thing you're gonna notice, I'm gonna say, is uh, it starts right like SMB two. It's it's pretty much the same game. <laughs> yeah, I think this is like the connecting world between the real world and the subcon. So I I wanted to keep it the same, but as soon as you go in the door, uh, you'll notice immediately that some things are different. Um, that shy guy that he jumped on is a custom sprite that you can't pick up, and that kind of helps the player there. There's a lot of little custom things uh, throughout the run, and Pooh is really, really running through this. This is great. Um, that was a really, really good first room. Yeah, that, so that yeah, that vine jump right there is mm -hmm. a three-frame jump, and it's but they're so hard. Yeah, you'll see those used a lot more throughout the run, um, and that keep that in mind um, because the way he climbed up through that vine to transition screens and that vine jump are both going to be really important things to remember uh, later on in the run. But this first level is pretty standard. Uh, he wants to just get that bomb, blow up the wall, and climb up the vine. And so now uh, we're getting to the first Birdo fight, and um, there's three vegetables here that you could hit Birdo with, um, but you really only need one, and that was really good. Nice job, Boo. Uh, one vegetable. The vegetable is still active when you throw it, so you can pick it up again and recycle it. That's actually a trick from the SMB2 Any% percent in the real game. So in case you didn't notice, each of these levels is, has only one character. Instead of being able to pick your character, um, that is limited per level. And uh, I designed this to sort of show off the individual powers of each character. So in this Luigi level, we're going to be getting a lot of floaty jumps. And I tried to make each of their individual powers feel fun while you go through the different kind of thematic levels. Yeah, that's probably my favorite part about it is that, like, in regular SMB2, you kind of just pick a character and roll with him most of the time. But in this, you really have to know all four characters and how they work and how they operate and uh, the different levels. You know, like, a lot of, like, nobody else besides Luigi could do this level anyway. So it's really, really cool how he uh, showed off uh, each character's individual strengths. Yeah, Pooh did a really cool trick right there. Uh, you're invulnerable during that picking up something animation. So he picked up the bomb out of the ground at the same time that spark was passing over him, and it just went right through him. That's a pretty precise timing to get that trick. That was really good. And so this Birdo fight plays out pretty much the same as the first. Uh, that Birdo is green, so it's never going to shoot anything other than fire and um, he's going to be picking up the vegetables and just tossing them. It is possible to get this with one vegetable, like in the first level, but I actually intentionally made it much harder to do the one vegetable Luigi. Oh, one vegetable Luigi is so hard. You're, you're really cramped, and Luigi jumps so high. Um, and with him throwing fireballs in that space, and you're usually small because of the speed strat. It's, it's a very, very difficult thing. I can do two veggie Luigi, but it's, it's almost not worth it. So this is the first Peach level in the run, and there's a property of Peach that gets used a lot uh, throughout this game. It's that jumping refreshes Peach's float, not landing. So if you jump without floating at all, 
you can float in midair just like Pooh did really well. That was great. Yeah, no, there is uh, one strat that involves doing damage right there, but it, we've found that it's kind of slower because of this fight. Being Big Peach in this fight allows you to really toss bombs back a bit and, uh... Oh, do some real damage to Mouser. Yeah, oh. designed this run to be a lot about choices. Uh, do you take the damage and maybe it'll hurt you later on? Or do you play it a little bit more slowly and have your power uh, for later? And I'm, I'm glad to see that a lot of that got into the run and, and that people are making these choices about maybe save a little bit of time, maybe have a little bit more safety. That was a good Mouser. Thanks. So th these bosses are kind of tough to uh, recontextualize in ROM hacks because their behavior is so specific to the real room that they were from. So a lot of these bosses are pretty simple kind of one room fights to maybe show off a different different sort of attack that they could do. And Pooh is going to set up for a trick here that was discovered by Andrew G. He gets it. Very good. By standing on top of that Shy Guy Jar Spawner uh, and crouching, you're a little bit smaller when you crouch, and when the Shy Guy comes up, it pushes you right through the ceiling and skips a little bit of that fight. So he's going to have to collect these cherries now, and you saw him doing that dig uh, invulnerability trick again to get that ninji down there a little bit faster. Five cherries equals one uh, superstar. And he's going to need the superstar at the end of this. So he's got to make a quick route here. Ooh, look out and collect uh, collect the cherries. <laughs> nice. Nice escape there. Lost a little bit of time because of the screen scrolling. There's a super jump strat that avoids that. But at least we got that bottom uh, Sniffit to despawn. So that's pretty cool. Oh, that's okay. You know, Pooh, I was going to ask, do you actually use any safety strats in this game? Glitch Cat was just talking about the difference between safety strats and going faster. Are there any that you're just like, no, not right now? Um, well, there's these two clips, and if I'm small, I don't do them. Like, right here, I could actually, we could clip through the ceiling. You'll see that in the task if we can get that incentive unlocked. Uh, but you gotta be big to do them. Uh, so I... I those would be like the only one, and then there's a Vime jump right here that I generally skip. Yeah, even even yeah. this room has a little bit of choices involved with the order that you collect the cherries. Uh, some people go for this far cherry, the last, and some people uh, save one of the earlier ones. Um, and it, I think it kind of remains to be seen what is actually the fastest strat. Um, it's kind of funny, this game came out about a week and a half ago, and so far the world record hasn't stood for more than two days. So. Also, yes. on the incentive, really quickly. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, I'm. We are currently at six hundred and twenty dollars out of seven hundred and fifty dollars. So, if you want to see that task of this amazing game, please get those donations in. Back to you, Poop. It's a really cool task because uh, it, it's actually shown us some RTA strats that, in a, only the matter of a few days, people have picked up and actually started using and run. So you're going to see Pooh doing some vine jumps uh, with Luigi. Luigi has a slightly larger frame window to get those vine jumps. I think he has eight frames compared to three for all the other characters. Um, so jumping oh. off the vines in this section saves a lot of time. I got juked. The ninja juked me right there. <laughs> he juked me. The fun fun fact about this section, uh, on, the, on the very first day I released this game, uh, Speedrunner, you guys are probably familiar with, Andrew G found out that you could clip up the vine and clip through the ceiling like we were talking about. And um, it took him into kind of a nowhere land. Uh, but for the 1.1 version, I hit a secret room uh, that says GG. And now we have a special Andrew G percent to speedrun getting to that room. So Pooh is going to try the clip here. Yeah, he is Big Luigi, so he has a shot at it. Uh, this was the trick that was discovered yesterday. And uh, the, the record right now has this uh, strat in it. So he's trying to do a crouch jump off of Vine, which is a little bit more difficult than a regular jump. And um, just like in Mario Maker, if you're familiar with that, ooh, he almost got it there. Go, there it is. So he made his hitbox a little bit smaller and managed to climb, clip into the ceiling and climb up the Vine, triggering the screen transition. Then he died out of the level and used the game's built-in save feature to restart himself. And now he's not stuck in the wall and he skipped that whole Birdo fight and is now in 2-3 uh, as intended. That was a really, really good strat, actually. That went off really well. Good job. Yeah, that was probably the best I've actually done it so far since I've started doing it earlier this afternoon. <laughs> so that was, uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that one went. That nice marathon luck right here we're getting. 
who using a little bit of strats here too. Is, uh, there's a shell that he would want to throw up above him, but since he had his big power, um, he could just get uh, across the spikes that you're supposed to jump on the shell for. And this is the Triclide fight. Um, again, these bosses are just difficult to recontextualize because they're so built for the room that they were already in. So it's a pretty simple fight. Three vegetables in kind of a challenge to jump on the vines. Really, really good execution. That was great. I love the peach levels. And I believe, just like that, the return to Subcon Tash Showcase incentive has been met. Thank you, everybody, for your donations. Woo! Thanks, everybody. So the uh, the I tried to use a lot of sort of iconic themes from the original Mario 2 when I was making this. So you get the, the flying carpet level and then the really iconic uh, infinite waterfall level. And actually, the infinite waterfall is also 3-2 in the original game. So this is kind of an homage. And uh, there's some really slippery rocks here, but Pooh's going to be making his way uh, up the waterfall and using a lot of that uh, float tech that we talked about earlier with Peach, uh, where jumping is going to refresh his float. And also, uh, you'll notice that he's crouching here, and that makes his hitbox a little bit smaller. Um, these Bezos, they might look like RNG, but they're actually not. They spawn, and then they pick where you are, and they're basically trying to fly into your head. And uh, I had to nerf this part a lot when I built it, because this was the part I thought, oh man, like everyone's gonna hate me for this part. So yeah, this added... part, I still hate you for this part. Like I hate that part. It's so hard. This is this is the this is the most I thought I could get away with when I made yeah. this. And originally, this level didn't have uh, the checkpoint door right there. Going into any screen transition creates an automatic checkpoint in this game, and uh, I thought that the checkpoint door was a nice. Uh, favor to do the player after having to do that crazy Bezo jump. Uh, Pooh, actually, that was not a mistake. He went for a time save there. Uh, he can damage boost off the spikes and get a quicker jump up to that second hedgehog platform, but it's a really small frame window to get the input right. Yeah, it's it's very hard. It's I'd say I'm like 50% on that D-boost jump, but it's worth going for, and we we took the safety, the safety uh, strat right there of going in the checkpoint. So, like, why not try and show it off, you know what I mean? Uh, right here, this this level is gonna have the most do or die vine jump in the game, uh, but it's also the biggest like natural time save we can do. So you kind of have to do it, in my opinion. Although I haven't really seen any other runners been doing it, you know. No, actually, you're uh, the you're the only one that that I've seen as well. Um, this skip is entirely intentional on my part. I I wanted to build in. I didn't set out to do it that way but when i finally made the obstacle and take a took a look at it i thought well that's the trade-off so you either have to respawn this shy guy and do the a very slow ride across these spikes by throwing him down there or nice. yes very good you can do that three frame vine jump and get in the door just before your damage runs out that was really well executed yeah and you you only have a f like two frames uh, by the time you get to the door to actually go inside of it. So you have to be very precise. It's a very, very difficult move uh, to pull that off, which is, I guess, why nobody else is going for it. But I, I kind of feel like that's like, a, it's a huge time save. You kind of have to go for it. The game's already hard enough, like. Well, I, oh I just like gosh. to point out how, <laughs> oh, I, I, oh, I spoke a little bit too soon. I was going to point out that 3-2 three, three has been consistently the toughest level for everybody, and Pooh just making that look so easy. Um, quick fun fact about how the game was built uh, while we're getting back there. That Shy Guy down below, uh, I call him a Ride Guy, because uh, it's a custom sprite, uh, which it has a little bit of uh, extra speed uh, than a normal Shy Guy, and also the player can't pick it up like they would be able to pick up a normal Shy Guy, and that's um, to prevent a little bit of cheese, and also to make sure the player can't accidentally hurt themselves. <laughs> by just picking up that poor guy. So there are some uh, some custom sprites uh, that have been added with the, the SMB2 editor. And you're actually gonna see some more uh, custom sprites in this one. Uh, this is something that was not in the vanilla game, but I thought it would add kind of a fun twist and show what the editor can do. Uh, those purple snippets will injure you like that. <laughs> and uh, these <laughs> purple mushrooms will give you a bounce, uh, just like that purple shy guy. Yeah, I just wanted to show the purple snippet injuring him, obviously. That was that was just intentional for the marathon, obviously. Oh, <laughs> you want to avoid the eggs, too? If you get hit in the face with an egg, you, you, you tend to die, but... Oh, did I mention, by the way, I'm donating $25 for each death, so I believe that's four already? 
So there's a really fun uh, trick coming up at the end of this, and I'm not going to spoil it until you get to see it. But uh, okay, well, you might you might not notice that the um, the screen freezes when that door appears, but that red ride guy underneath you just keeps walking. And uh, I didn't intend for that, but then I was testing the fight and noticed it happened, and I just busted out laughing. I said, "Well, okay, I'm going to keep that in." Uh, so this level, you are uh, Luigi and sliding uh, through these tunnels on some ice. And we did a little bit of extra hacks to this. Some players were getting dropped down inputs on their controllers. So we added a three-frame buffer to Luigi's uh, standing up animation, but only when you're crouched with momentum. And that actually is like a little bit of behind the scenes uh, ASM that's helping to make this a little bit smoother for players. Uh, this is the curling section. He wants to get close to the shell, but not go over, just like the price is right. That was really well done. Uh, you're not really mashing oh. the button here ooh, as much as you are uh, kind of tapping in a rhythm. And this ice can be very tricky. We're going to do another damage boost strat right here. This actually is another big time save. Yeah, you want to get that little flurry up there in the right to kind of follow you and get into that pocket. But if you still have your power up, you can do that damage boost. But the trade-off is that it makes that jump much more difficult. The uh, the Big John slide to jump on his head first and then slide through. I was going to try and get get right even with the, uh, with the turtle shell. Oh, no, I'm going to die again. I was trying to get even with the turtle shell. Oh, yep. This is kind of embarrassing to die in this room. This is literally a free room. But I've been trying to show something off twice, and it's not working, so... Here, we'll do we'll do it this way. We'll do it this way. Well, Coach Taking Cat, the this off was a level, just so you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to do it for chat. Proceed. Oh. Oh. We're cruising through this game right now. Uh, so this is uh, this is a really fun one. This is one of my favorite levels that I made. And um, just unrelated fun fact, uh, this is my Celeste-inspired level. Uh, I was playing Celeste when I made this, and I kind of wanted it to feel the same. So we're going to be riding on these Birdo eggs. That was a really clean first section. And then this second section has these um, loose eggs that are just kind of coming at you. Uh, if you would respawn them, you can respawn them uh, by going the other way. But you kind of want to not let them fall on your head and pick them up and use them to clear a path. Really nice nope. backup strats. It's getting that egg to respawn. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's fine. That was <laughs> that was that was for the charity. That 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 death was for the charity right there. It's for we're a good gonna, cause. Yeah, we're gonna forget that egg. The first time I made the troll at the beginning of this level, if that egg that is right at the beginning, if it falls on your head and you're not pressing any inputs, it'll just push you back down into the previous room. And I laughed so hard. And it, the, a lot of the process of making this game was just, I know that if I'm making something and I, I think it's funny and I start laughing, that I knew I should keep it in. So a lot of these things are like, players find them accidentally, but I found them accidentally too. And I'm just glad people can get that same humor. <laughs> Also, two shout outs to chat again. We just met our Quickie World incentive. Thank you very much. We're going to be seeing the 100% of Quickie World, so thank you again. You both are doing Heck. a great job. Heck yeah. Great job, guys. So this is uh, probably everybody's least favorite level. Uh, it was also the level we had to do the most custom work to. Super Mario World Kaizos will get the joke. This is a five-room castle. And that, that was kind of my joke going into it. Um, these vases are the only thing that doesn't checkpoint you when you transition screens. So if Pooh dies here, he has to go all the way back to the beginning, a la traditional five-room castle. Um, but this is some really good movement right now. And uh, we're going to be getting into the Fry Guy fight here at the end. And we had to do a lot of, uh, well, D4 had to do a lot of custom work to get this to uh, behave correctly. Um, Want to get three hits on this Fry Guy. And oh, then he splits no. up. Oh, dear. Oh, no. oh dear. Okay, so, be, all right. Yeah, this is going to be, that's all right. We'll get to watch it again. The, the, <laughs> oh, wow. That fry guy exploded in a way that I was not ready for. <laughs> yeah. And, th and this is why uh, this level can really be tough in runs because um, you go all the way back to the start. And uh, I, <laughs> sorry, guys, I, I thought um, I thought everyone would get the five room castle joke, but that, I guess that doesn't make it any less painful, huh? <laughs> Definitely not. 
Okay. Now, aesthetically, I, this is one of my favorite levels of the run, uh, Glitch Cat. What was your intent when you were making this in terms of uh, art? Oh, man. Well, at first, again? I wanted it. There are no uh, subscreen doors when you use the potion and you go into the subscreen. Um, I didn't use those in the game because they don't really serve a whole lot of function right now. Uh, so I, at first I wanted to make it feel like you're kind of going into the jars, into that subscreen world. Like the Frog Eye fight has the subscreen palette. Um, and then I also kind of, uh, I like the pyramid structure here because they're the only type of structure that I found that got those little hopping Frog guys caught up for a little while. Otherwise they just kind of laser beam right to where you are. Um, so it's it's like subscreen and then it's also kind of an homage to uh, one of my favorite arcade games, Qbert. Uh, if anybody knows Q, where you jump on the pyramid and change the color of the boxes. Uh, I was thinking Qbert when I made this. Except unfortunately when Toad gets hit, we don't get the uh, set of, you know, uh, exclamation point, question mark, etc. <laughs> don't worry, I'm, I'm doing plenty of that. No! How is this happening? <laughs> oh no. So, so I, I would have to imagine as a player, my... My number one thing I would probably ask you, Glitch Cat, is why no checkpoint in this stage? Is there a reason for that? Well, it's it's the um, in in Super Mario World Kaizos, there's very often it's kind of a trope. It's the five room castle that you have five challenge rooms you have to get through, <laughs> and then you're free. And that was the joke that I was uh, playing on here. It's the you know the, the fourth room is the boss, and you get the heart at the end. So that was that was a good clear. I got so lucky on that. <laughs> Wow, Pooh, yeah. what such clutch. Such clutch. I would have been embarrassed of it. That would have been a $100 Fry Guy fight right there, if not. So the Fry is Guys, is... yeah, if you, oh, can yeah. Get, if you can get them to explode in this, like, one area, it's really easy. You can just, like, hit all four of them with one shot. But if they go anywhere else, you're just, like, SOL. As a designer of the Fry Guy fight, I kind of like there being a part in the game that's not entirely formulaic that at some point yeah. you kind of have to just jump duck and dodge and use your use your intuition for it i i like stuff like that so i kind of put it in the run and then this is the hawk mouth fight um this was another kind of iconic part of smb2 so i, I wanted to make sure i included it um three vegetables hit him in the face and uh, he'll open up to go to the next area there was a skip in the 1.0 version uh, notice that door is one block off the ground. Oof. Oof. <laughs> you could just walk Oof. back in the door and uh, and skip this whole fight, um, but it wasn't intentional on my part, and it was... Um, normally, the Hawkmouth just takes you between screen areas. In the normal game, it shows up in 7-2 and takes you to Wart, but for this one, uh, D4 actually helped us hack it in to where um, it would take you to the next level, and uh, that had the unintended result of making that door also take you to the next level, so we had to move that up one. Really good strat uh, Pooh did there. Recycling one of the vegetables, that was a uh, really excellent backup. My very clutch. And here we are to everyone's favorite uh, SMB boss, Wart. This Wart fight is so difficult. It's, it is long and difficult, I will say. Yeah. For, from a design point, um, you know, there really wasn't... A whole heck of a lot that you can do with Wart. Uh, for one thing, it's a sprite that makes those little veggies pop out of the Dream Machine down there. And if that sprite is on the screen, those veggies will only come out in those exact positions. So actually, um, this fight is almost exactly the same as the vanilla fight, except that you're kind of on spikes and on a conveyor belt. Um, Wart just doesn't have a whole lot of behavior. He just walks back and forth and shoots those bubbles. So it again, it's difficult sometimes to recontextualize the original boss fights in a really fresh and interesting way. So I kind of hope they did the best I could with it. Uh, one thing about Wart, though, um, I see a lot of people trying to throw the vegetables right into his mouth. You actually don't have to do that. As long as his mouth is open, um, most of his body is vulnerable. So actually, the strat is to kind of aim for his belly yeah. and just kind of hope that um, time it right when his mouth opens. Yeah, and he does, like, different belly like different bubble patterns any ones that get the big arc up front like that one's a very bad one that one's really hard but the next one he'll do ah a higher arc and you try to kind of just like sneak them in right underneath there is the the goal i i it was a pretty good idea um to it was actually fail stream's idea to allow you to pick any character uh for the final level and i tried to design the fight so that each character kind of had a, a drawback 
Um, but hold, hold your applause because there's, I love everyone's reaction to this the first time. There's one more thing you have to do, get into the tiny door. <laughs> and time. Great run. Wow. What did, what did it end up going at? That was 23.18, I think. Dang, we were. I was hoping for sub twenty two at least, but that, that was that was pretty decent. We showed off some cool things in there. Not mad. That was that was great. I was very impressed. <laughs> that was rad. And equally as impressive as the gameplay is your commentary glitch, Cat. I mean, not only did you design yeah. this, but you know this inside and out. All of the different kinds of hidden mechanics in here. Thank you so much for your input. This is a fantastic ROM hack. Thank you. You know, I, I'm really I'm honored to be able to show this off, and I'm just. On a personal note, it, it's so incredibly gratifying to see so many people having so much fun with this. The The reaction to this game over the past week and a half has just been absolutely unreal, and it's it's a really great feeling. So I just want to thank you guys all for that. Yeah, it's uh, it's very, what do I want to say? Every once in a while, like, a one ROM hack kind of takes the, the ROM hack community by storm, and we all kind of just sit down and play that one. This has definitely been that ROM hack for the last two weeks, and I, I don't. It doesn't seem like it's going to slow down at all because there's so many new strats still coming out, and it's so new and fresh to everybody. It's it's really really fun. I strongly suggest everyone tries it, even if you're kind of scared of Kaizo, quote unquote. This is a very like very intro to kind of like Kaizo or difficult levels type of thing. I Glitchcat was very adamant that it's not a quote unquote Kaizo, but I think it is. And, and, uh, I wanted to give people like the feeling of playing and beating a Kaizo without actually having to go through all the stuff involved with that. And also, too, I wanted to give a really quick shout out to D to the Fourth, uh, who made mm -hmm. the editor that made all this possible and was just a constant uh, source of help and inspiration with a lot of the custom ASM for this that went in behind the scenes. The whole custom save function of the game was his, and he put in just as much work as I did and deserves just as much credit. Yeah, shout out to, to D to the fourth uh, one more time. I, I don't think we can give him enough love right there, you know? Yeah, I just made one game, but his editor could go on to make millions of games potentially. Yeah. All right, so we're going to take a very, very, very short break and bring this TAS up so we can watch the full TAS as well, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you once more again to uh, both Grand Pooh Bear and Glitch Cat. What an amazing run, amazing commentary. I mean, we couldn't really ask for too much more. And again, thank you to everybody again. As a reminder, we have the Return to Subcon Task Showcase coming up. And then that 100% run, because we did meet the incentive for that of Quickie World, which is awesome too. So thank you to everybody. And also, again, as a quick reminder, bits and sub money do go to the charity as well. So just as a reminder, thank you again for everybody who has been contributing. Uh, a couple quick donations really quick here. Uh, we have $10 from Mutu that says, thanks for the pun, Skybills. Thank you. $50 from Tetrali. I'm super hyped for Meg's run. Here's some money to make sure Quickie World isn't too much of a quickie. It's a great one. And we also have $100 from Garby that says, love watching these events and supporting the awesome cause. Put this towards the Quickie World 100%. So thank you again so much to everybody and uh without further ado we are going to be getting uh the uh, return to subcon test showcase does uh, yeah when, before before we go to this does anybody have my deaths my full deaths how many we had was that i think there was eight or nine in there i just i'm, I'm gonna want to check i want to check chat for that yes yeah, so it's gonna be it's a really cool test i just want to make sure i get charged for the proper amount of deaths is what i'm doing so, uh, Glitch Cat, I'm going to let you kind of run with this task since you are the one to talk about it. 25? <laughs> okay. So, um, this task was made by Furpy McFrosting. Um, major shout-outs. This came out, um, I, like, a, a, like, a little bit over a week after the game was released. And um, the strategies that were found here got translated into RTA. So, the really interesting thing for me about this task is that an RTA time could actually get fairly close to this. Uh, and it might be really cool to see a really talented player versus the TAS, and it wouldn't be too incredibly far off. So, yeah, go go ahead. Take it away. All right. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, so, first of all, not a whole lot different. Um, what you're going to see is a lot of really optimized movement, um, and that's the main area where the TAS kind of pulls away from human RTA runs. Um, so this is going to look pretty typical, um, just despite the fact that it's pretty much perfect so far. Um, and then once we get into the run a little bit later, 
um, you'll see the clips. Um, the clip that Pooh used um, and another clip that we talked about earlier, um, both of those uh, were found by this task. That's a kind of, I'm not even sure how that works. That's like a double uh, vine jump off of there to just get up to that section a little bit faster. And uh, the grabbing the vegetable is extra swag. Uh, you're supposed to throw that shell to the right and then run left, but task just kind of loops around like that. And um, there's something really cool coming up. You're going to see that double vine jump again to get way up to the top of the top little pillar there and grab that vegetable. And that's actually the quickest one to get. Uh, there's a thing that doesn't get used in this game called a double jump. And it's a trick from the regular SMB2 run. If you jump inside an enemy's hitbox, you get another jump in midair. And the regular SMB2 uses that a bit. And I'm pretty sure that's what was going on um, with the top of those vines that it was it was triggering a double jump. Uh, this level also pretty standard. Um, you notice, so one thing I, I included about this game was um, the original two-hit kill. There's a little clip to get uh, around that. Clipping is a thing. Uh, but the two-hit kill um, I put in to make the game a little bit easier for players and also to provide some interesting routing options for the speed run. Assuming deathless in each level, you have exactly one damage boost that you can use. And so it's up to the runner, uh, or in this case the TAS, um, where they want to use it, how they want to use it, what's the best time save, what's the safest way, uh, or if they want to use it at all. Uh, TAS opting for the really difficult one vegetable Luigi strat. Um, it's so cool. That one vegetable <laughs> Luigi is so hard. Yeah, that was that was an intentional thing on my part. Um, I knew that one vegetable Mario was possible and Luigi because I, I tested them both before I released the game. But um, it's intentional that Mario's one vegetable strat is basically free, and then Luigi's is very difficult. You get one for free and one that takes a lot of skill. Um, again, because I wanted this run to be a lot about choices, uh, whether or not you damage boost, whether or not you go for the time save, and sort of that risk-reward um, inherent to speedrunning. And I think what's cool is that it, it's created a lot of different strats that all kind of wind up at the same time. I mean, all three of the top times in the leaderboard right now are like 18 to 17 minutes, and they all use different strats and achieve kind of the same results. That was a really fast mouser fight, by the way. Yeah, I love how he jumps off the bomb for it. It's that's a, that's an RTA really possible strat, actually. If you get there as small Peach, took the damage boost this in the so previous cool section. Right here. Oh yeah, I, this is uh, yeah, that there it jump, is. That's I great. spent yeah, I spent like that's probably like five hours perfect. trying. Yeah, yeah, I spent I've like five hours trying to do RTA it. At all. It's so hard. I I don't even know. I mean, it's it's obviously possible, but that. That might be for like frame perfect, pixel perfect. Uh, it saves a lot of time though. And then you see some really optimized uh, digging. You can actually dig like faster or slower uh, based on how you do the buttons. And uh, TAS, of course, can get just like perfect digs. So I really like this little, uh, oh, they're, they're, yeah, the little zigzag pattern that they use there, uh, like an optimal way to dig down through that section. And then the really early superstar grab, uh, which saves a second or two. Has just kind here, of showing off. Here, so here we comes go. the first clip. Here it is. <laughs> you don't blink and you'll miss it. There it is. So they did a crouch jump onto that vine, clipped through the ceiling, climbed up into the adjacent room, and that works because the exit for that room is already defined in the screen in the code. Uh, you notice that that clip happens on the same screen that the hawk mouth is on, and that's so that the hawk mouth knows to send you there. But what I didn't anticipate was people being able to climb up the ceiling like that. Uh, and that's why that clip works. If the exit were undefined, it would send you uh, back to 1-1 in the first section, which is this game's level zero. Um, and there's one more clip. Now, the fun thing is that that clip is actually possible, RTA. Uh, you could do that. Pooh's gotten it. I've got it. Other players have gotten it. And we're setting up for the second clip now, the one that Pooh did, except for only task can get out because that requires simultaneous left-right inputs to get out of the wall there. So a human player would do what Poo do, Poo did, Poo do, do what Poo do, and, uh, <laughs> die to get out of that, and then reset, and the auto save feature will put you there. Uh, but task can get out a little bit faster. But this is what I mean that the the RTA run and the task could get very close to one another, uh, except for this level where uh, the task can still have Luigi where he's not meant to be, and uh, the RTA run would have to go and get Mario. Yeah, that that Luigi. Having Luigi in that level is nice. It's very convenient. It goes very fast. <laughs> you know, it, ma it makes me think uh, maybe intended wrong warp route for the sequel or some place where you have to come back as a different character that's not supposed to be there to uh, get into a hidden area. Lots of ideas. Uh, lots Ooh. of potential for Super Mario 2. 
So jumping off that carpet, um, the carpet moves really slowly when you're on it, and jumping off the carpet is faster, and you can actually land on the carpet right on the extreme edge of it, and it'll kind of like pull the carpet towards you, and um, that's the way you get more speed uh, through that section. So there's, a, I think that, no, that wasn't a double jump. That was just two very well-articulated regular jumps. You can see this damage boost that I missed earlier right there. Of course, Tass never misses anything. Hey, uh, Glitch, who uh, developed this task again? I want to make sure we give them a proper shout-out. Uh, this is Furpy McFrosting, and uh, you can find their work on YouTube. All right, thank you. They've done tasks for all my games. <laughs> it's really impressive. I put out a task or a game, and they just immediately break it. They just immediately <laughs> I love it. it it's a, I love it's a working it. it's relationship. A, it's a working relationship. Okay, so that strat right there, clipping into the side, skips that um, second part. You don't. You can get right down to the bottom as Big Mario there, and you don't have to grab that uh, second heart by throwing the mushroom block. That's a little bit faster. You have to kill that shy guy, even RTA, because you wouldn't be able to jump up there normally. He'll block you from below. And then Tass, of course, using the uh, Tass, of course, copying some strats from Pooh. And this is kind of an auto scroll section. Um, I, as I made this, I was thinking, you know, man, I don't know if speedrun players are going to be like, oh, auto scroller. But I tried to make it go as fast as possible, and I modified the speed of that shy guy again to be a little bit quicker than usual uh, to keep you on your toes. And, uh, you know, if you're ahead in a speed run and you have to wait a couple seconds, you know, just, like, take some time. Think about your life and how the runs go. And that was a really nice midair uh, from, from Tass there to get through that just a little bit faster. So, yeah, coming into 2-3 with these bouncy mushrooms. I think this is pretty much uh, the normal route for this level just performed uh, really, really, really well. There is a uh, time save, I think, coming up The Tass is going to use, uh, charging the super jump and then jumping right over to that bouncy mushroom on the left. Uh, you can totally get that RTA. It saves a little bit of time. And then Tass clipping into the wall here to uh, get the eggs from Birdo as fast as possible. And then being right above the spikes right before the door appears so that you take no time damage boosting and get into that door as fast as possible. So I, I don't know if anyone, and no, no one noticed, I know this is just an incidental thing. Uh, this this run for this level is pretty pretty standard. Um, all the whales have, have one eye, and they're kind of looking like two-dimensionally. But I, I, haven't no, I haven't noticed a lot of other people noticing that this final whale has two eyes. He's looking right at it. you. And, <laughs> yeah, nobody noticed. <laughs> I've He's never the only noticed. one. I wanted him to be kind of like a smug whale. Nobody, I don't know, nobody noticed that. That's so funny. Yeah, this part, uh, pretty typical again, just kind of running away from these flurries, um, getting uh, really fast acceleration through that ice. There is kind of an optimal way to do that. I'm pretty sure you press jump every other frame. I'm pretty sure that's the optimal way to get speed uh, through the ice. And then uh, a cool strat here at the end, getting ahead of that shell um, to grab that orb just a little bit sooner. I think you could probably do that RTA, but again, it's like the super optimal inputs uh, for ice jumping that would make that tough. Is there any one trick you're thinking of right now, Glitchcat, that is RTA viable that none of the current uh, top runners are doing currently? Honestly, no. I've, I've actually been really impressed with how quickly people got really good at the game. Uh, I put in a lot of intended um, movement optimization and things like that. Like that jump that Tassarite did right there, that was, that was my intended um, like movement optimization. There are a few little things that I don't see people either trying or going for that much. Um, but no, all the strats have been pretty much found out. My PB uh, before launch was 24 minutes, and right now it's like 18-something. And people were beating my, my pre-launch PB a couple of days later, and that has been a really impressive thing for me to watch. Yeah, I the only this one I can like really a... think of is, is that one vine jump at the end of the damage boost level. And, but I go for it, so. Yeah, Pooh's the only, you're the only one that I've, uh, I've seen even really trying for it. Yeah. It is a big risk, though, and that's yeah. that's kind of part of the intended route. And there's the really fast cycle for that room. And uh, yeah, these Fry Guy strats are <laughs> pretty impressive <laughs> with the quad kill. And then, and then being right in front of the door when it appears to save that time going into the door. 
Now we're gonna, not going to see the the nice intense clutch fight we had there, as the Tass just did what the Tass always does. But uh, Pooh, I'm going to be remembering that fight for a while. Oh yeah, that was uh, it happened. <laughs> People's reaction to getting a really clutch kill on the Frog Guy fight, especially on their first time, has been just amazing. Uh, there was a little optimization there. You notice he um, jumped from the bounce mushroom and then kind of went over onto the conveyor below. That's RTA viable, but incredibly tough to do. And then that, I think, is the fastest strat for that Hawkmouth fight. Kind of what you saw Pooh do, recycle one vegetable twice and then use the middle vegetable as the third hit. So Tass picks Mario here, um, I believe just because it saves frames in the character selection screen. And um, this is a really, really fast wart. But again, it would technically be possible, which is just one of the things I really like about this task, that especially by opening up the any percent run uh, to use the uh, wrong warping, both of them now being available, uh, human players could get really close to this. Uh, I firmly believe that humans can get sub 14 on this game, if not better. But it would come down to a very good wart fight, uh, which has kind of burned many runs. And wa watch the position right before the door opens. Last pixel. And that's it. That's uh, 11, what, 11.41 for the, uh, for the TAS. All the subcons have been saved. Yeah, it's impressive. Yeah, I mean, as as a lot of tasks are, but I think really, especially considering how long this game has been out, it's it's such a cool, cool, impressive task. And like watching all the double jumps is is awesome. I love it. Yeah, and I we're didn't really grateful know about. It because, uh, yeah, oh, go, go ahead. Yeah, we're really grateful for it because again, like those two wrong warps are both something that we've kind of implemented into runs now. And we had no idea about them. And so, yeah, I didn't know about yeah. them when I put the game out. That was a trick that I found when Andrew G clipped through the ceiling. I'm like, oh, geez, now that's possible. Didn't even know about it. And it's just a really happy accident, I think, that it led to two wrong warps. As, as a developer, it really feels cool to see people, you know, you put five months into this game and you think you know everything. And then day one, it comes out and there's so much new stuff to discover. Yeah. So just one more quick note before we leave. Really quick donation. We do have the the promise three hundred and fifty dollars from Pooh that says thank you, Power Up with Pride. Pooh, thank you very much again. This has been amazing. Oh, thank you. Th thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. This is such a great uh great marathon and a uh, great charity to support. I'm I'm very happy that you guys let me be here. And not only that, uh I actually was supposed to run another game, but but I, I'm so happy that Power Up with Pride was was the marathon to finally ride the new game hype here and sub sub that run, which was a fun run. Don't get me wrong, but sub it for this nice new hot ROM hack here. So thank you, Power Up with Pride, for for riding the new game hype. Finally, a marathon does it. You know, thank you. Yeah, this is the marathon debut for this game. So I'm I'm really appreciative of that. Yeah. Cool. Thank you guys so much. All right, thank you all too for being here again. Just real solid run. And thank you again to Furphy McFrosting as well for this lovely task of this game. Just, oh my goodness, things that I didn't even think we're capable of in SMB2. So thank you again. And thank you too again, Glitch Cat and Pooh. Wonderful commentary and performance. So coming up, we do have, uh, I believe, uh, Quickie World with Meg, which I'm very excited for. Meg, Mag Attack. Very, very, very excited. I want to see some hype in chat. And I'm going to read a couple more donations here before we get moving on. Um, some words of encouragement here. $50 from Must Be Tuesday Music that says, Best of luck to Meg Mac Attack. I am cheering you on and looking forward to Quickie World 100%. And a little bit of a goodbye to Pooh's Run. We have $10 from uh, Evan Grill that says, Got to donate for my boy Pooh and put in that last 10 for the task. $5 from Justin C. Love Pooh. Love SMB2. Love this cause. We also have a $120 donation from Shopta again. And thank you so much again for your bit donation as well, at that, or uh, you giving the bits. And also the donation says, Love you, Glitch and Pooh. Well, who wouldn't? Thank you very much. We also have $200 from Anonymous. Thank you very much, Anonymous. Very generous donation.
we have $50 from Grenleth that says shout outs to all the staff and runners for making this event happen. And $50 from Jeff who just leaves poo love. All right, folks, we are getting set up for the next run. So we will see y'all soon. And again, let's get excited for Quickie World with Meg Mac Attack. We'll be right back. <laughs> 